Hey everyone, Travis here from Travis.media. Today, I'm gonna to be sharing with you three powerful concepts that will help you learn to code faster. Hey everyone, thanks for taking time to watch my video. I appreciate all of you. And if you're a new subscriber and you're into this kind of stuff, coding, web development, career advancement, things like that, consider hitting that subscribe button below. Lots of great videos are on the way. So as I stated before, today I wanna to give you three powerful concepts to help you learn to code faster. So I was thinking today, hey, if I could do it all over again, if I could go back to those very first kind of code newbie days and months, what would I do different in order to level up faster? What would I do different to avoid the mistakes that I made during those times? And in doing so, I thought, hey, why don't I share this for you code newbies out there to level up faster and not make these same mistakes that I did. So I have three concepts for you today to learn, and we're gonna start with number one, pseudocode. So anyone with a logical brain can do pseudocode. Actually, we do it every day. So when I started to code, I just could not understand pseudocode. Perhaps I was reading the wrong tutorials or something, but it seemed really difficult because I kept coming to different conclusions than the person teaching it. So I was told I needed to paraphrase the code before I actually write it. And then they would go on to talk about markdown and the best way to write it. And I got caught up in all the steps involved and it just seemed like something I couldn't grasp. So they were writing down, you know, their paraphrased way of doing stuff. I was thinking that I had to have the same thing. Like, whoa, I came up with kind of a different set of rules for how I'm gonna do it compared to what they had. So really, it took me like a year later to realize that I was seriously overthinking this, that I'm not supposed to get the same pseudocode as someone else. Of course, it should solve the same problem, but the, the ways we approach it are gonna be a little different, and, and I'm not supposed to get the same thing as everyone else. So pseudocode is a personal thing. How, in regular, everyday words and text are you gonna solve this problem? This is very, very helpful and something you should do almost always before starting some kind of coding, uh, before starting some kind of new functionality or project or something that you're doing in your job or whatever you're working on. So in order to demonstrate this, let me give you just kind of an everyday example, something that doesn't involve coding, but just an everyday scenario. So here's an example. Let's say you have a dentist appointment at three o'clock. It's currently two o'clock and you're already out in the town. You need to do three things. You need to get groceries, you need to deposit a check, and you need to make it to the appointment by three o'clock. So in, the, in terms of pseudocode, you might plan things like this. Actually, it's not pseudocode, but in, in terms of just how you would schedule this out, you might do something like this. So I need to get groceries and deposit a check by three o'clock, okay? Which one is further away? The bank or the grocery store? Well, the bank. So let's go to the bank first, all right? And then which grocery store is closer to the dentist office? Well, Walmart, so we're gonna go there after that. So it'll be 2.30 when I arrive at Walmart. The dentist office is five minutes away, so I'm gonna have 25 minutes to shop. In order to be done in 25 minutes, I can only grab the essentials. So I'm just gonna get the essentials in the grocery section only. That'll take me about 25 minutes. And then if I leave Walmart by 2.55, it's five minutes to the dentist's office, I'm there by three o'clock. That is everyday simple planning and that's all pseudocode is. So let's give a coding example now. So let's say you had two forms on your website. You have form A on the left and form B on the right. And say you wanna get the number of rooms from form A, which is three, and you wanna repeat a set of fields on form B based on how many rooms there were on form A. So you got three, three rooms on form A that populates three fields on form B. Again, so if there were three rooms on form A, the section of form B would repeat three times. If there are two rooms in form A, the section on form B would repeat only two times. Now in pseudocode, it doesn't matter if this is in PHP, if this is in JavaScript, Python, Kotlin, it doesn't matter what it's in because we don't need syntax or code at all. We just need some paraphrased logic. So it might look something like this. First, we're gonna check to see if there is a form A because if there's no form A, we can't do anything. So we check to see if there's a form A. Next, we need to get the number of rooms from form A, which in our example was three. 
Then we need to think, okay, what's the max number here? We can only have a max number of 10 rooms. So we're gonna create 10 sections in form B. So we're gonna create 10 inputs. So that'll be the max number. And we're gonna give each one of these sections or inputs a class that relates to that room number. So it'll be like room dash one, room dash two. These are gonna be the classes for those inputs. And then we're gonna take the number of rooms from form A and we're gonna loop through form B hiding the sections that are greater than the number on the class. So if we got three rooms, we're gonna, we're gonna start looping through these and we're gonna say uh, room one, that's good, keep it. Room two, that's good, keep it. Room three, that's good, keep it. And then room four, that's greater than three. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 are all gonna be hidden. So we're gonna do that and that's all my pseudocode's gonna say. I'm just writing out my strategy for solving this problem. So again, the strategy doesn't depend on any language, any syntax or anything. And pseudocode is super powerful and it's something you need to practice. All right, let's move on now to number two. Number two is concepts. You're like, that's pretty vague. It is pretty vague, but let me explain what I mean. So concepts. So let me just start it out with an example. So JavaScript has a for loop. You learn that, you get the hang of that, and then you learn the while loop. And then all of a sudden somebody goes, hey, I need some help on my PHP site. And you get on their PHP site and you realize, hey, PHP has a for loop. Ooh, they have a while loop. And then like a week later, somebody needs help on a Python project and you go, wow, there's a for loop here and there's a while loop here. Here's something else. JavaScript has an if statement that can be paired with an else if. PHP has an else if and Python has an else if. Different language, same concept. They all three have if statements. They all three have strings, variables, methods, functions. What is the difference? The difference is syntax, but we're gonna to get to that in a minute. The key is to nail down these fundamental concepts that come, come with every language and get a good grasp on them. All right, let me give you a few of them here. So we have a string, we have an integer, and these, these are on almost, if not all, languages. Strings, we have integers, variables, we have conditionals, if statements, we have for loops, while loops, we have functions, and many more. What am I getting at here? What I'm getting at is if all the languages share these same concepts, then it's more important to learn the concepts than it is a particular language. And it, it gives you more flexibility to move around by knowing these concepts. So if you understand what they are, and you know how they work, you're prepared to tackle any coding situation given that you know the syntax. And that leads us to number three. You like that segue? That leads us to number three, which is syntax. So you got the pseudocode, you got your pseudocode down, you know the concepts. So what do you do? I don't really know this language well and I gotta solve this problem. Well, all you need now is the syntax, right? And your best friend in knowing and learning syntax is documentation. And if you watch any of my videos or read my blog, you know I am really, really big on documentation. You will never outgrow the documentation of a language. You will still use documentation even as an expert. It is your friend. The sooner you make it your acquaintance, the faster you will learn. Why? Because you now understand the pseudocode, which is logic paraphrased, and you understand the fundamental concepts of coding. All that's left for you is to write it out correctly. PHP, JavaScript, Python, content management systems like WordPress, they all have documentation created for you to reference as you write code in that language. And becoming a good coder happens when you learn to read and benefit from the documentation. Another benefit, just side note, another benefit of consulting the sources of a language is that you always get the right answer. Not a long list of opinions from a Google search, though Google searches are wonderful, okay? So let me give you a couple examples here of how you would read documentation. Let's use WordPress as an example. A lot of people know WordPress, a lot of people work with WordPress, so I'm gonna use that as an example. But here's, here's how you would read this documentation if you weren't familiar with it and you needed to do some work. So let's say I'm in WordPress and on my blog page, I want to have a category show up below the title of every blog post listed. So my loop is showing my latest six posts and I want each of their respective categories listed below the post title. So those categories for that post, I want them listed below the post title. Now I could go to Google and search for how to add categories to my blog post and get an answer that I can copy and paste. 
But it even better is to go to the codex and get the answer that I need in addition to all the different uses of the code available. So if I, if I look around for a minute, or maybe I already know this, but in order to do this, I need to use WordPress's built-in function, the category. So how do I use the category? Well, as I consult the docs, I can glean many things, and I see this. I see the description, so the category displays a link to the category or categories a post belongs to. Sounds like something I could use. How do you use it? Well, you use it with this the category with a number of parameters. Now that moves us on to the parameters. How do we use the parameters? Well, first we note that all three of them are optional. And we have number one, a separator, and it explains what that is. We got parents, it explains what that is, and we have a post ID. So we don't have to use these, they're optional. We can just say the category and it's gonna spit out the category or categories. But if we wanna put a separator in there like a comma, we can do that here. Or if we want to not use the category of that post but some other post ID for some reason, you can use that. And the documentation gives me some examples. So here it is, separated by space, separated by comma, separated by arrow, wonderful. That should give me everything I need to use the category properly. Next example, how about I get the post thumbnail? So I'm, I'm looping through some posts and I need to get the thumbnail for that post. And I'm like, I don't quite know how to do that, um, but I know that I need to, to pull that thumbnail that I uploaded to the post. I need to get that somehow. So I go to the docs, I type in you know, WordPress post thumbnail, and this thing is gonna come right up top, top of Google. So I see here that it is the, the post thumbnail, and this is actually not the codex, but the developer docs. I don't know what the difference is. There's, there's like the codex and the de I think developer docs are newer maybe. Correct me if I'm wrong. Hit me in the comments if I'm wrong. So I see here that the function is called the post thumbnail. And what, it, what does it do? It displays the post thumbnail. Great. Here's a description on telling me about it. And then I move down. What are the parameters? Well, I have two parameters. They're both optional. The first one is a size, which I can use a string or an array. And the image size to use accepts any valid image size or an array of width and height values in pixels in that order. Wonderful. And then here's the default value, post thumbnail. Next, I see how I have another parameter here that is either a string or an array. It's optional. And it can be a query string or an array of attributes. So I have a size parameter and an attributes parameter and everything I need to know is right there. Then I can scroll down and I can see some examples. So here's an example, the post thumbnail, and these are WordPress, default WordPress sizes. So you got thumbnail, medium, medium, large, and somebody wrote out over here the actual sizes. So that's wonderful, that gives me an example. And then I also see down here how to use it in an array. So I can say, hey, post thumbnail, which is actually the default, I didn't have to do that. And then I can put a number of attributes in, in an array. So think about the attributes of an image. So you, can, you got the class, you got the source, you might have the alt, you might have the title. You can use any of those there in an array. And that's all there is to it. I didn't know how to do those things. I went directly to the documentation. I knew from my pseudocode what I needed to do. I know the concepts of almost all the languages. I can come right here and I can see, hey, this is a function. These are some parameters. Here are my exact steps. So that's number three is syntax, better yet, documentation. So looking back, these are the three things that I wish I would have known when I was a code newbie and I was learning to code. So if I would have known these, I think I would have grown faster. I think I would have been able to adapt to different frameworks or languages or even projects that I was put on because I had these kind of fundamentals to guide me. And if you apply these three concepts, I think you'll grow faster as a code newbie. So let me ask you, looking back on your coding journey, what are some things that you would have changed and what are some things that really boosted you forward and helped you become a better developer faster? That's what I wanna talk about below in the comments. So be sure to leave a comment and let's have a good discussion. Hopefully this video was helpful and consider clicking that subscribe button below. I'll see you in the next video.